Hey everyone, Clint Coons here, and in this video, we're going to talk about the Delaware Statutory Trust. Okay, let's get started. So I don't know if you've been heard about this, um, but the Delaware Statutory Trust has been gaining in popularity in some circles, and there's a reason for that. And it has to do with 1031 exchanges. This is where the initial impetus came from. And it had to do with the individual investors who were selling property and they wanted to roll it into a syndication. But the problem is when you sell real estate and you try to roll into a syndication, the syndication interest does not qualify for 1031 exchange purposes because it's not like kind property. Most people who set up syndications will set up a syndication as a limited liability company here and you're gonna come in as a member and maybe you get a 5% LLC membership interest. So you sold your house, right, real estate, and you put it with a QI, qualified intermediary, so they're holding on to $600,000 from this investment, and you wanna roll it into this syndication for this 5% LLC interest. Doesn't work. So what an individual or people started coming up with was this idea of using a Delaware statutory trust to do this transaction. And so they got a ruling from the, the IRS that says if this is a Delaware statutory trust, and, and there's other ones, any type of statutory trust that's set up in a very specific manner in which the members or the beneficiaries, so you got your 600,000 again, you roll it into the trust and you become a beneficiary in this trust. And there's certain technicalities that also have to be in there as well as far as management and stuff. But the point is, is that it will qualify. So the Delaware Statutory Trust started to become a popular entity for people who are syndicating in order to allow 1031 exchange investors to put their money in because it was probably a common occurrence they're running into where they're thinking, hey, you know, I'd really like to get into it, but I'm not gonna invest with you because it doesn't qualify for a 1031 exchange. So this became a tool that has been used now for, for many years since that ruling to help put syndications together for 1031 exchange uh, investors. Now, just like anything, a tool like that can have multiple uses. So to understand it, let's look a little bit deeper on how Delaware Statutory Trust works. So in a Delaware Statutory Trust, the base model, not the 1031 exchange model, because that is a unique style of way you set it up. You don't have to set it up that way. A Delaware Statutory Trust is basically a business trust, all right? So it's a business trust, okay? If you, in fact, the statute in Delaware that refers to this used to be the Delaware Business Trust, if I recall, if you look at it, and then they amended the statute a number of years ago to go to, to, to retitle it as a statutory trust. So it's a business trust. And business trusts have been around, I think, longer than corporations. I mean, back uh, going back with the for founding of this, this country, most individuals would run their business or own real estate in a business trust because corporations were limited. They couldn't own property and they could only have, I think they could only be in existence for a set period of time. So business trusts used to be really popular, but then they changed the corporate laws and you saw a shift away from trust into the, the corporate form. So this business trust then in Delaware, um, the way it's set up is through a filing, just like an LLC. And so if you, if you went down, you fill out a cert certification of trust, you record it with the state of Delaware, uh, you can create a Delaware statutory trust and it can be designed to hold real estate. And the reason why people do it is for a couple of reasons. Number one is going to be anonymity. Okay, so what do I mean by anonymity? When you set up a Delaware statutory trust, the statute requires that you have a trustee in Delaware. So if I'm gonna set up my, my trust here, like any trust, okay, you have to, you're gonna have a trustee, okay, and you're gonna have a beneficiary, one or more. So in Delaware, the trustee of your trust needs to be a Delaware trustee. So this would be a Delaware LLC corporation, Delaware trust company would be there. So it's got to have a, a presence in Delaware. Now you list that on there, but here's the thing that a lot of people like myself is I'm not going to turn over control of this entity. It's like setting up an LLC and making Wells Fargo the manager of your LLC. 
Would you be comfortable to do that, to go out and buy real estate and make Wells Fargo the manager? I think not. You're like, I'm going to be the manager of my limited liability company. So, so when people look at this, initially they say, well, wait a minute. I got to turn over control of that LLC that's going to go out and buy real estate to someone I don't even know. And they're probably going to charge me a ton of money. You could, but you could be a little smarter with how you create your trust. Because when you set up a trust, it's like a limited liability company operating agreement. You can build different provisions in there and different rights. Like in LLCs that we set up, we can create them with a board of directors, with officers, presidents, not just managers, but presidents, vice presidents. I mean, it, it's, it's wide open. You can set it up where uh, even though it's a manager managed LLC, all, the majority of the control is held by a treasurer or something like that. It's all inside of the operating agreement. So with the Delaware Statutory Trust, the way we structure them is that you have more than one trustee. You have your Delaware trustee, and then you have your basically what we call the investment trustee. And, and the investment trustee, you give them all the powers over all the trust assets, the powers to distribute money to the beneficiaries, the powers to make the, the investment decisions with regards to the trust. The only thing this Delaware trustee gets to do is send in the paperwork to the state. That's it. You say, you're, you're a signatory trustee. Your only power is to get the document registered with the Secretary of State. And if the trust gets sued, you get notified, you send it to me. But you have no other control over this trust. So you appoint yourself, this would be you, as this investment trustee. Now, the thing about this, where the anonymity comes in, is that when you file for this trust, you only have to list the Delaware trustee. So if you're using a Delaware trust company, their name would be listed on here as trustee. Beneficiaries' names are not listed. You're going to be the beneficiary, which is the owner of the trust. All that's going to be down there. You're going to have that, but none of that's available. All it is is a certificate that states who the trustee is. You only have to list one. So that's how you remain hidden. No one will know that you're involved here. So when you set up this trust, you get anonymity there. Now, you also obtain some asset protection. Let me show you how that works. Okay, unlike a land trust or a living trust or a personal property trust, those types of trusts, with the exception of Florida for a land trust, do not offer you asset protection. So what I mean is that if I set up a land trust over here and I have a piece of real estate inside of it and I'm the beneficiary, and someone sues me, they can take my trust and all of its assets. Or if something happens inside of the property, they can sue the trust and they can sue me as the beneficiary and they can come after my assets. So that's what I mean by no asset protection. Well, with this little guy over here with the Delaware Statutory Trust, which is similar to the Wyoming Statutory Trust and other statutory trusts, because they're a creature of statute and not common law like I'm talking about here. And what I mean by a creature of statute, you have to actually file them. I was just speaking with uh, or corresponding with a client the other day on a Wyoming statutory trust I created for them for their real estate investing. And their banker asked uh, a question, had to do with the trust. He said, who is the grantor of this trust? And I wrote back, there is no grantor. This isn't the standard common law trust. This is a business trust, all right? It doesn't have that. It only has a trustee and a beneficiary. It files similar like articles of incorporation. So with the Delaware Statutory Trust and, and most statutory trusts, the way it works is that if you have an asset held inside of it, like this, like a piece of property, if something goes wrong with that property, then the beneficiaries are not liable. You can sue the trust, but the statute states that the beneficiaries are not liable. So it gives you asset protection from whatever happens inside of the trust. That's why this business trust, I can say, provides asset protection for you. If something goes wrong, you're protected from it, from, from the liabilities associated with owning that asset. Now, where it fails, what it doesn't provide you, though, is protection for your assets from lawsuits against you individually. So if you get sued personally, the interest you hold in this trust is like stock in a corporation. They can, a creditor can take it from you. Now, what do we do then to prevent someone from taking our interest? Well, there's a couple of different strategies we've come up with. One strategy requires that you draft your trust so that in the event the beneficiary is involved in litigation, 
the trustee is required to convert the trust into a limited liability company. So now you get those charging order uh, protections you've heard me talk about in many of my videos. If you haven't, go search charging order protections on my channel and you can find some videos on that, how it works. That's one way to do it, automatic conversion. In fact, many trusts that are set up for 1031 exchange purposes, if there's ever uh, um, certain types of events, bankruptcy or something like that, lending issues, they convert to LLCs by default. You can do the same thing. The trust that we set up, we have triggers built into there. Another thing option you have with this type of uh, scenario, if you want protection for yourself, is instead of being the beneficiary individually, make a Wyoming LLC the beneficiary like this, Wyoming LLC, the beneficiary. And now you have your statutory trust. The beneficiary is the Wyoming LLC down here. So now you have that charging order protection that if anybody sued you, your LLC protects your trust from your liability. So you can have multiple trusts just like this, all owned by this one limited liability company. I think it's a great strategy to utilize if it makes sense for your type of investing. I'll cover that in just a moment. So putting that interest into there. Now, how is it, how's it treated for tax purposes, okay? So these trusts can be treated as corporations, S-corps, partnerships, or disregarded entities. Well, if you know on, on the other videos where I talk about using LLCs, having the multiple LLCs held by that one Wyoming LLC, I'm always stating, set up these LLCs as disregarded entities, have this entity treated as a partnership. Same way with the, with the trust. Set up the trust, you'll get an EIN for the trust. Okay, so you, so you get an EIN and you say, I want it to be disregarded. It's gonna be a disregarded entity. Boom, 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 EINs across the board. If you wanna collect rents at the trust, you go down to your bank, open up a business trust account for, for that trust. And um, then you can just collect rents in the name of the trust. So, uh, with that, this one down here would be a, a partnership, okay? So that would give us those, that other aspect I would like to talk about, looking better to lenders, getting full credit for the income on my 1040, and it would just, just flow through that LLC to you in this manner. So when are we gonna use this type of trust uh, for our investing? Why would I wanna use a trust over a limited liability company? Because LLCs do the same thing. Well. We use them in situations depending upon where you live. So if you are if you reside in California, for instance, and there's that $800 franchise tax, check out my video on that where I talk about a, a way to avoid it um, for California investors. I talk about a Wyoming statutory trust. Uh, so you use them in situations like that where if you use a traditional LLC, they're going to tax you more. The business or the business trust, the statutory trust, you can, you can avoid that. So that's a great scenario uh, in where you'd want to use it. If you want to invest, hold property where the LLC itself may pay a, a franchise tax, but the trust won't, that might be a situation to use it. So you want to evaluate where you're investing and where it doesn't make sense because an LLC is going to be treated or treat you differently, that is from a tax standpoint, then the business trust could be a viable option. Now, what is maybe a drawback of using uh, a statutory trust in this scenario? Well, I think the drawback with Delaware, and this is why we use Wyoming, is this Delaware trustee requirement. Wyoming does not have a requirement that you actually use a Wyoming trustee. It's not required. Um, although we typically will set up a Wyoming LLC where you'll be your own trustee through your LLC in that scenario. So I think Wyoming gives you a little more control over the entire structure rather than uh, going with the Delaware route where you're gonna use typically a trust company there. And that, and that can you know, add up in fees for, for individuals when there's that trust company involved versus just having your own LLC. But generally speaking, I mean, there's a lot of real estate owned by these structures. And it just takes a little bit of research, you'll start finding them. I mean, I was shocked when I first started looking into it the first time how many properties are actually owned by statutory trusts. So it is a pretty common uh, structure. The only thing you have to be aware of is you wanna work with someone who's knowledgeable in setting up these structures because even though you set it up in say Wyoming or Delaware, you're still in certain states gonna to have to register it. And these states have different ways of registering a business trust. It's a lot of them and it's not like a limited liability company. 
So you have to be aware of that in all 50 states where it's required to be registered, where it's not. I give you an example. One of my clients, in, a California client, owns some property in Arizona. It happens to be raw land. So in that particular case, because it's raw land, we have it owned by a Wyoming statutory trust. We did not have to register this statutory trust in Arizona because there's an exclusion for land in Arizona. And the reason why they set it up is because they live in California and they didn't want to, have to pay franchise tax on that entity. So they get the asset protection without the additional $800 cost. So you may want to consider using a statutory trust in your investing. Just make sure it's right for what it is you're doing and you know all the specific filing requirements in order to own property in the various states where uh, the real estate is located, and then take it from there and build your plan out. Hey, uh, if you got any other topics you can think of, you wanna shoot me a comment on that, leave those in the comments. Clint, we'd like to hear more about this. I take those and those give me ideas for new videos. Got any questions, leave those as well. All right, guys, take care. All the best with your investing.